Hey there, it's Jim and Debbie with episode 55 of the Midday Minute, our special college episode, right, Debbie? <laughs> yes. It, how could you tell? <laughs> well, I'm not sure our viewers recognize you. That is Debbie beneath uh, all the, uh, gear, all the uh, Wisconsin gear. Uh, why are we dressed in our in college clothes? Well, Jim, we are dressed in our college finest because we are going to talk all about the MVS contest, which concluded over the weekend with the Leadership Weekend, um, by talking about the top winners and all the various things we did um, to engage our scholars. Um, we're going to bring on uh, Colleen Conrad, the Scholarship Programs Manager. All right. Well, why, without further ado, why don't we um, bring Colleen in here? Um, pulling her in right now. Um, from the banks of the Red Cedar to the halls of the ENF, it's Colleen Conrad. Welcome to back to the show. Uh, we were just talking about the uh, recently concluded over the weekend, uh, the leadership weekend. Yeah, what an exciting time. Uh, I just, I just had a blast. Um, it's just so heartwarming to see all the kids in one place and um, believe it or not, not even tired of Zoom. I could do it another weekend, <laughs> no problem. Well, let me say before Colleen starts telling us all about the weekend, what an outstanding job that she and her team did with pulling together some incredible virtual engagement activities. Oh, thank you so much. I mean, it was really my team. And as many middies know, we have two scholarship recipients on my team. And so it just made it that much more special. They're rock stars. Well, and not just uh, scholarship recipients, but both were um, alumni of Leadership Weekend, right? Jessica Carter was uh, from Lead 2 in 2015, I believe. Lead 2, right. And Grace Roebuck from Lead 3 in 2016. So uh, they'd been through it and they were able to help shape the scholar experience with, um, you know, fr from the other side of the equation. So. That's right. It was so, I mean, it was invaluable to have their help because they've been in the, they've been in their shoes, right? They, they know how great the leadership experience was and they were, they distilled down what that means to them and then did a great job um, making sure it happened for our 2021 scholars, so. And they weren't the only, only um, alumni who were involved in, uh, in the weekend, right? Yeah, that's right. So we had our normal four scholar leaders that we bring to every leadership weekend um, that represent a variety of, um, of our top 20 classes. So we had um, Jacob Pritchie, Safa, um, Shiv and, um, and Aliyah Han um, from a myriad of different uh, uh, years. But then also too, you know, the virtual space, it makes it so easy to bring a lot of people together from, from all over the place, kind of at a moment's notice. So we put out the call to all of our former top 20 uh, to join us for a little thing we called speed friending. Um, which is basically just uh, <laughs> uh, like speed dating, but speed friending, um, little breakout rooms and um, kind of points of uh, debate and discussion to get to know each other. And we had a great turnout from our prior years. I think we had every top 20 year represented since we started the leadership weekend, except 2019. So. Yeah. And that goes back to 2014, which was lead one. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, we just, like I said, we put out the call and it was so easy to get people who were like, yes, I will be there. I'm so excited. And um, it just really made it a special time for our top uh, 20 this year to realize that, you know, they're, they're joining the Elks family and they know that means, you know, our 1800 lodges across the country, but and it also means their peers and people who just experience what they are going to experience in college, which makes it that much more special. Yeah. Well, um, we've been at it now, Debbie, what, since 2008 was when we really tried to reshape um, the scholar experience and the nature of the transaction between the Elks and our scholarship recipients. Right, and in 2008 is when we brought in a dedicated staff to help us get to this place. Right, and what we pulled off, I think what you guys pulled off uh, this past weekend speaks volumes about uh, to how far we've come. Um, you know, we wanted to be more than a check to our scholarship recipients. And we've worked hard to be that. And what's happened is we've developed this network of elk scholars, people are invested in the idea of elk's family. They really feel that they are part of that family and they want to stay involved and they want to help shape what it means to be an elk scholar. Absolutely. I mean, we saw that, you know, throughout the whole, the whole weekend, as Colleen said, we had representation going back to, well, certainly to the first leadership weekend in 2014. So this was lead eight. We also 
had our top uh, winners from 2003. Many people will know uh, Sean Loosley and Bryce Caswell. Um, and to hear on Saturday, kind of after all the programming had, um, you know, concluded and we all came together before we broke off for the rest of the evening to hear every single one of those scholars who went through the experience kind of just talk about what it means to be part of the Elks family, that they're, you know, that this group of 20 is not going to be alone. Um, it just really hit home and it was just such a perfect encapsulation of all that we've done to kind of get to this place, to, to get that, you know, Elks family brand going. Um, it really just completely emphasized that, reiterated it, underscored it, you know, exclamation pointed it. And it was, it was really fantastic. And I think even in the virtual space, you know, that that really resonated with all of the, the top 20 for sure. Don't you agree, Colleen? I, I totally agree. Yeah. In that wrap up, when we talked about, you know, uh, what um, our, we recapped the weekend, our rose and thorn, right? What we enjoyed and what will stick with us. I mean, time and time again, our top 20 this year, we're talking about those connections they made. And um, every single one of them said it, we weren't even prompting. It was right. just naturally what they enjoyed most about the virtual weekend was getting to know their fellow scholars. And um, it, the power of bringing them together and the power of meeting like-minded people from across the country just can't be understated. So, um, and we've sort of alluded to this, but last year when we made the call to uh, cancel the in-person leadership weekend, we had weeks to put something together, right? Three or four weeks to Literally. figure out how we were gonna do it virtually. And I think we put together a pretty good experience. This year was different because uh, we didn't have a full year to prepare, but we had months to prepare, right? We made the call back in what, November? Yeah, or December. we're on the holidays. Around the holidays mm -hmm. that we weren't gonna be able to meet in person. And that gave us a lot of time to put together a really meaningful experience, virtual experience for our scholars. Why don't you talk about some of the things uh, that we did, some of the programming we did this year? Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, we again, we had the benefit of time. We also had the benefit of having uh, Grace Roebuck, our uh, scholar fellow here, and already running virtual programming for our scholars is, since she's, she was hired in the summer. So she had a really good knowledge of what works and what doesn't work for our scholars in the, in the virtual space. So she was, she came ready to go with just like, these are the things I know worked. And we just had some really, she had some fun, unique, easy ideas um, to get everyone together. So we had grade, which uh, Debbie's adorable dog, Rosie, got a chance to come to. Um, and that was just an opportunity for us to talk about our furry friends and for uh, our scholars to get to know the ENF. Uh, we did a scavenger hunt, which was actually really, really fun. A lot of running around your house and showing up objects based on a prompt. Um, the speed friending I already talked about, that was the biggest hit of the weekend, um, which is funny because it was the easiest one to, to put on because it was just you drop a, a, you know, a prompt in the chat and everyone just kind of, uh, you know, connect that way. Um, and then we also had yoga. So we have our Welkness Club, which is a student, run, a scholar run club that Grace helped start. Um, all around uh, wellness. And they, uh, we sent them yoga mats and they got a chance to do some yoga after uh, most of them after their interview as a stress buster. So, um, you know, to go along with that, um, we got a chance to send snacks and swag well in advance so everyone was ready to go. And then I think the most exciting, for me, the part that I was most excited about, um, we wanted to try and give the virtual leadership weekend, a little Chicago flair. Um, well, that's so something we, we always try to do in person, right? So yeah. yeah, this is great what you guys did. Yeah, so usually we're going to this year's tower or we're taking our boat tour. And um, so in order to try and replicate that, we brought in sec the second city and we did an improv, uh, we did an Im uh, a big improv game, uh, lots of improv games and it was a lot of fun. They actually had their like music director there. So they had a little organ going and um, it was a wonderful way to kind of wrap up the weekend, but then also show off Chicago. Yeah. Love it. So uh, Debbie, this reminds me of, you know, when we were getting started uh, with our scholar engagement efforts, we had a couple of models in mind. Um, mm -hmm. Coca-Cola, of course, and uh, the Ron Brown scholars. Mm -hmm. And they were sort of, for us, the gold standards. Um, but why don't you talk about how that sort of changed? 
Well, it, yes, they were. They they helped us get to where we are now, for sure. You know, they had already started bringing people together in, in a sort of leadership weekend capacity. Um, and then, you know, everybody probably knows that we are longtime members of the National Scholarship Providers Association, and uh, they hold an annual convention. And so they always are asking for people, you know, for for scholarship providers to submit proposals for sessions. And we did that a few years back and it was about engaging um, ELK scholars. And so we, Marianne and um, our scholar fellow at the time, I think it was uh, Jenna Johnson, uh, went down to Kansas City and you know we held the session and it was fantastic. And you know we were talking a little bit about who we were modeling our engagement efforts on. And, and I'll never forget somebody stood up and said, well, now you're the gold standard. Like it's amazing yep. what you're doing and, and we're gonna emulate what your engagement efforts are. And it was just like, oh, okay, yeah, all right. Awesome. And I, I would say that we've even moved, you know, with a few years down the road, we're, we're no longer the gold standard, we're the Bitcoin standard. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. right. True. Cause that's only going up, you know. That's right. We're Rocket the cryptocurrency the standard. Right. So. Uh, that's fantastic, and our, our viewers should all feel really good about that, uh, and and the way we've again changed the nature of the relationship, and uh, we are working really hard to create champions of the order. We we sure are. So one of those champions uh, was present all weekend. Um, Jay Little, our top scholar from uh, 2016, he's an elk now. Um, He's one of the scholar leaders. I think he also served on one of the panels for the interviews, and we'll get to the interviews in a minute. Um, but you had a chance to to debrief with Jay after the weekend, right, Debbie? Right. I, you know, what a great segue to you. I just want to say that, that obviously we haven't even really mentioned that there are interviews for the top awards that are happening throughout the weekend, right? But for us it's kind of ancillary. It's a big deal, obviously. 30, right. 40, and 50,000 dollar scholarships is, are, is a huge deal and we're all incredibly, you know, proud of that. But the connections we're making for the scholars, you know, for them to connect together and then for them to connect with us as else is also is, is really the, the the bedrock of of the, the weekend. Yeah, the interview um, is the hook for the weekend, but that's that's sort of it, right? Everything right. else around right. it is uh, right. what the leadership weekend is really all about. Well, I, yeah, Jay, you know, Jay is the best and <laughs> Jay, as you said, was the top winner in, in 2016. He's from a small town in Mississippi and now is getting his PhD at uh, the University of Washington in, in Seattle. Um, and so he joined us this weekend as, as a, on a panel. He was a panelist for the um, male panel. So he was doing the interviews. And then after that, uh, a couple of us had a chance to, to catch up with him. Um, and it was just so amazing to hear him talk. First of all, he said he opened Facebook on Saturday morning and up popped a memory. And that memory was five years ago today, you were in Chicago for the leadership weekend, <laughs> which, you know, how awesome is that? Um, and just, you know, fun fact, I think everybody knows, we've talked about this before, when Jay came to Chicago for lead, I guess, three, it was his first time on a plane. Like we were part of that huge life experience for him at, at you know, in, in 2016. Now, five years later, he's like, he's running the world. And um, he had mentioned, and I thought that this was also just fantastic that, you know, he received a lot of scholarships back in, in 2016 to support his undergraduate education. And really the Elks are the only organization that he is still a part of, you know, and intimately a part of. Um, he joined the Gulfport Mississippi Lodge. He just recently transferred to, to the Seattle Lodge so that he can continue to be involved. He keeps up with us all the time. Um, he was obviously an integral part of the weekend. Um, but he mentioned that one of the reasons that he is so, I think, connected to us is the intimacy of the, the top 20 of the leadership weekend, that it just allows for such relationships to be formed, both with the other scholars and with us as an organization. He keeps in contact with a lot of them frequently, you know, and, and those aren't always things like that Colleen and I hear, you know, sometimes we don't hear these things until we're actually talking to somebody, but it's happening all around us. We just don't necessarily know about it. And it's fantastic to hear about it so that we can then share those 
you know, that, those amazing stories. All right, so um, we've been dancing around the interviews and again, um, you know, that, that's, that's why everybody's there, but uh, it's just a product of the weekend, I guess, right? Um, but let's, let's talk about it. We got a chance, you got a chance to meet tw uh, 20 outstanding scholars uh, virtually um, through all sorts of programming. Uh, and then on Saturday morning, uh, they all interviewed uh, via Zoom, 20 minutes. Um, and at the end of those interviews, the judges had to deliberate and um, select the top six, two winners each at $30,000, $40,000, $50, $50,000. So I think our, our viewers would like to know who the top winners were. All right, I am ready. You heard it here first, folks. This is uh, the 2021 MBS top six winners, and I'm starting with third place. Our two third place winners are Pedro Caladrone from Oxnard, California, Lodge number 14, 1443, and Zoe Yates of Linwood, Washington, Lodge number 2171. Those are our third place $30,000 MBS winners. Do you want to give us a little snapshot of each of them? Um... Yeah, definitely. So um, Pedro uh, is very into engineering. He's going to go to UCLA and, um, and major in mechanical engineering. And what I really appreciated about um, meeting Pedro over the weekend was how committed he is to paying it forward. He said on Friday when he was introducing himself that he's benefited a lot from people helping him and mentoring him. And one of his dreams is to set up a scholarship fund to help those who are in his position. So that was wonderful. So. Uh, kudos to Pedro, a uh, wonderful scholar and our one of our $30,000 winners. Uh, Zoe is just a ball of energy. I just, you instantly fall in love with Zoe once you meet her. And she was just such a driving force of all, the, uh, all things positive during the weekend. She's going to Tulane. So she's heading from Washington down to New Orleans. And she is planning on majoring in Latin American studies, poli-sci and international development. So She's got a lot on her plate for next year, and yeah. I can't wait to see her succeed. Um, all right, so that was third place. Our two second place winners for $40,000 are Coben Samansky from Hutchison, Minnesota, Lodge number 2427. And we have Molly McCummins from Newcastle, Pennsylvania, Lodge number 69. Both are receiving $40,000 for their undergrad education. And uh, both Molly and Coben were just so kind and just had fantastic stories. Both have overcome so many obstacles and we're just so pleased to have them um, in the Elks family. Coben is headed to uh, Harvard next year, most likely to study international relations. And Molly is um, leaning towards Hillsdale College to study history. So, and again, all, you know, uh, most, most of our scholars are a little bit undecided. So that's where they're thinking now, but that obviously can change. It's an exciting time of year. Saturday. For Till right. Yes. Till May first, decision day. Decision day is May first. So, um, so yeah, that's what they're thinking. That, you know, just as an aside, that that decision day is a driver for when Leadership Weekend occurs, and uh, everything uh, we have to work our whole schedule for the contest works backward from there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, an exciting time of year for for all high school seniors, obviously, and lots of big decisions to make, but. Um, speaking of big decisions and big things, are you ready for our first place winners? I'm ready. We are. All right. In first place, we have Galila from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Lodge number 134. Um, Galila's uh, undecided, leaning towards Georgetown and going to major in global affairs and pre-med. Um, and then we also have Jacob Lockman from Washington, from White Salmon, Washington. Uh, Lodge number 1868, and uh, Jacob is planning to head to Harvey Mudd College to study computer science. Um, just standout scholars, wonderful, wonderful mm -hmm. human beings, and we're just so happy to support them in their education journey. That sounds fantastic. So congratulations to all of them. Uh, the other 14 of the top um, 20 will each receive $20,000. And then of course, all the other winners are, uh, you can see them online, all of them will receive, all the runners up will receive $4,000 scholarships. That's right, that's so. right. 
any final thoughts uh, from the leadership weekend from the most valuable student contest in general? Uh, I think this time of year, my heart is always so full with the love of Elks family, which sounds super cheesy, but I don't care. Um, <laughs> and I am so happy to welcome uh, these 500 new scholars into the Elks family. And then we're hoping to um, have our legacy winners at the end of this week too. So it's an exciting time exciting time of year. Well, it's the fruition of a long year. Um, and you know, it's, it's all like, um, bites, right. You know, like there's, it's all electronic now and you've got this rubric and we've got our volunteers working hard to screen applicants and advance, you know, and you know, that's all happening and we trust that it's happening. And then now we get to see the fruits of all that labor, right. You get to yeah. meet without fail, fail every year. It's just 20 amazing uh, students with 20 amazing stories. Um, I just, I can't imagine what it would, what it's like to be a judge on one of those panels. Um, you know, truly they have the hard job and the whole weekend is figuring out really how to sort these and, and who the top three are. Seriously. You know? um, but it just, it just makes all of us feel so good, right? Um, to, to meet, to meet, you know, these people that we're going to be investing in, to see our, our hard work come to fruition. Uh, you just can't help but feel good um, about the work we do, about the future of our country, um, the, you know, of the difference we're going to make in, the, in these, these uh, kids' lives. It's, it's really yeah. incredible. So. Yeah, the Elks are going to be a part of, of their future successes. You know, that is something we should all feel really great about. Absolutely. And that's part of what, what we've been trying to do. And we talk about creating champions of the order, you know, we'd love for our scholars to when they're ready to join the Elks. And we've tried to position ourselves as an organization uh, that they want to be a part of, that they can see as an outlet for their desire to serve. Um, and some of them are doing that. A lot of students are, are, are doing that. Um, but there are other ways that they can be champions of the order, um, sharing their experiences that we've provided. Um, the bonds that they build are uh, with their other fellow students um, are will forever forever be associated with the Elks and everything they go on to do, they're taking our name with them. Right, gotta so. feel good about that. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Colleen. Well, uh, you've earned uh, you've earned some time off. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I'm going to not look at Zoom for a little bit, uh, take a, take the weekend and be back at it. I mean, we're already starting to plan for next year. It, it just uh, never ends here in a good way. <laughs> well, and I guess before we let you go, we're also close to announcing legacy um, winners too, aren't we? Yeah, that's right. By the end of this week, we'll have our legacy winners as well. So exciting time of year. It's a good, yeah, it's a great time of the year. It's, it's beautiful outside. We've made it even more beautiful for 20 scholars that yeah. seem to be uh, an additional, how many rewarding legacy this year? Is it three? 350, <laughs> yeah. 350? yeah. Yes, you can't forget we have 50, 50 more legacy scholarships this year, which is yeah. exciting. Yeah, that's awesome. All right, well, uh, Colleen, thanks for joining us and um, sharing a little bit about the weekend. Uh, we appreciate all you guys do. Your team did a wonderful job. Uh, we're proud of you guys. Thank you yeah. so much, that means yeah. so much. All right, we'll talk to you Thanks, later. Bye. 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 All right. Do Big you week. remember that euphoria we felt in 2014 after the- Yeah, absolutely, it was incredible. Talk in Monday, you know- It just returned, back it recharged like, oh, yeah. Same yeah. thing. I mean, and, and it also, you know, we obviously have made the most of the virtual space both last year and this year, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I so very much look forward to being back in person again. Yeah, no, for sure. And hopefully that's yeah. next year, right? We can uh, do right. in person and uh, maybe trying out some of the things we, we did virtually, we can recreate uh, in person. Um, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the future, so. All right, well, I'm gonna have hat head today, so. Yeah, you're sporting, obviously, University of Wisconsin. Uh, Colleen was sporting her Michigan State attire where she went. Uh, I'm actually not wearing the color, well, not wearing uh, the emblem of the Harvard of the Midwest where I went. Instead, <laughs> I am wearing Bradley University where my money and my firstborn son really go to school. <laughs> That's where my heart is now. So. That's right. All right. Well, 
Well, thanks Thank everybody you. for tuning in. Um, we'll have links to the top winners and uh, we'll be cranking out stories about them in the coming weeks and months. Um, you're gonna hear more from them. Um, got some good things planned, uh, you know. Yeah. Thanks for being part of their journey. Thanks for watching the show. If you've liked this episode, give us a thumbs up. If not, if you're heartless and cruel, we'll take your <laughs> thumbs down anyway, it helps us out. Either way, share it far and wide so everybody can hear about what we've been doing with our scholarship program. If you're not already subscribing to our YouTube channel, hit the button and tap that bell so you'll be notified every time we post new content, like our newest show, Take a Sip, Take featuring a sip, yeah. and, right. uh, and project coordinators from various um, uh, community investment program grants. Mm -hmm. Like Hoop Shoot in the Breeze, our monthly program about the Hoop Shoot, like 20 for 20, which comes out every other week with fascinating interviews, sit downs with our um, with scholar and scholar alumni, uh, and of course our show. A whole network full of amazing content. All right, we'll see you in two weeks when we will be talking about, I don't know, probably the Hoop Shoot. Probably. All right. <laughs> All right, well, on Wisconsin. All right, thanks everybody. Bye. See ya.